SpaceX has announced an unexpected development for Starship Flight 9, set to launch next month. While details remain scarce, the company has hinted at something unusual that could impact the mission in a significant way. With each Starship test flight pushing the boundaries of spaceflight technology, this latest revelation has sparked speculation among space enthusiasts. Could it involve a new Raptor engine upgrade, a unique flight profile, or an experimental payload? The upcoming Starship Flight 9 mission, set for next month, will feature something unexpected, though the company remains tight-lipped about what it might be. Could we see a revolutionary change in the vehicle's design, an ambitious new flight objective, or a surprise payload? Stay tuned as SpaceX prepares for another bold step toward the future of space exploration. The booster for Flight 9 has been officially revealed, and while it's a surprising choice, it was also somewhat predictable. We've seen another shuffle of boosters at the production side of Starbase, including the rollback of Booster 16 from Massey's test site after a lengthy spate of testing. This may not seem important at first, but for now it puts to rest any speculation that it would refly on Flight 9 or at any time soon. This decision promises to usher in a new era for Starship. Notably, the booster's mission will feature a significant change. Catching the Super Heavy booster has become an effort that SpaceX is determined not to abandon in Starship launches. Since the first successful booster catch in Starship Flight 5, SpaceX has continuously worked to repeat the feat. If Flight 6 revealed issues that led to a soft ocean landing, then in Flight 7 and 8, the booster catches were executed smoothly and reliably. It then subsequently was missing a single engine during its final ignition sequence. Before dialing down to the customary three Raptor engines as it approached the chopsticks. We've noted here before that SpaceX seems to have learned quite a bit with super heavy boosters. Recently as shown by them going 343 with Mechazilla catch attempts. It's a luxury to have multiple flight-worthy boosters to choose from in Booster 14 and 16. Both seem like the most worthy candidates for future test flights. This success has fueled excitement among space enthusiasts. All hoping for another spectacular catch in the upcoming Starship Flight 9. We are rapidly approaching Flight 9 and preparations are intensifying, however one major question remains, which booster will be used for this mission? There are two possible candidates, Booster 16, which is currently undergoing active testing, and Booster 14, which previously flew on Flight 7. Now the answer seems clear. Booster 14 is expected to be reused for the upcoming Flight 9. This choice is logical, compared to Booster 12, which sustained some damage, and Booster 15, which was recently launched. Booster 14 is in the best condition for a quick turnaround. It also had a notably smooth and controlled landing on Flight 7, making it an ideal candidate for reuse. Recent developments further support this decision, while B-15 and Booster 12 were both moved to the Rocket Garden for storage, Booster 14 remained in Mega Bay 1, undergoing extensive refurbishment and inspection. The most reasonable explanation for this is that it is being prepared for another flight. Meanwhile, B-16, despite ongoing preparations, has experienced multiple delays. For instance, it remained at the Massey test site for several weeks after completing cryogenic testing. While this extra time may be intended for additional monitoring to prevent issues seen in previous flights, the slow progress suggests that Booster 16 is unlikely to be ready for Flight 9. Reusing Booster 14 is a significant milestone for Starship and SpaceX, even partial reusability is a major achievement, further solidifying Starship's position as the leading next generation rocket. Competing launch systems including ULA's Vulcan and NASA's SLS, are not reusable. Blue Origin's new Glenn is designed with reusability in mind, but it has yet to achieve. Flight Rocket Lap's Neutron still has a long road ahead before demonstrating full reusability. If SpaceX successfully reuses a Starship booster, it'll be a groundbreaking advancement that sets the company even further ahead in the commercial space race. For Booster 14, this mission presents an incredible opportunity. It could become the first Starship booster to launch twice. Achieving this would mark a crucial step toward full reusability, initially bringing Starship 
closer to the capabilities of the Falcon rocket family. Another significant milestone to watch is engine reuse. SpaceX already took a major step in this direction by reusing engine 314 on Flight 7, the first flight of Booster 14. Previously, this engine had flown on Booster 12 during Flight 5. If engine 314 flies again on Flight 9, it'll have achieved three launches, an extraordinary milestone in rocket reusability. With Booster 14 now poised for Flight 9, the next big question is, how will it perform? Unfortunately, it appears that Booster 14 will not be caught by the Mechazilla arms for recovery. Instead, it will likely be landed in the ocean, meaning that Flight 9 will be Booster 14's final mission. While this is disappointing, especially considering Booster 14's legacy as one of the first Starship boosters to land and be refurbished, this decision may be strategic. SpaceX has not officially stated why the booster will not be caught, but there are a few possible explanations. First, the launch tower's catching system may be undergoing upgrades, making it unavailable for Flight 9. Second and perhaps more likely, SpaceX may be prioritizing the performance of the ship. On this mission, ensuring that the upper stage completes its full flight profile successfully could be the primary focus. By landing the booster in the ocean, SpaceX can simplify operations and direct more resources toward validating the ship's re-entry and landing procedures. Despite its ocean landing, Booster 14's reuse remains a major step forward. It proves that SpaceX is making rapid progress in achieving Starship reusability, a critical factor in lowering costs and increasing launch frequency. Are you excited for this milestone? Show your support by commenting, let's go Booster 14 down below. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel to stay updated on SpaceX's incredible journey. If Booster 14 is indeed chosen for the upcoming flight, SpaceX will need to accelerate its preparations to ensure a smooth launch process. After spending several weeks in Mega Bay 1, Booster 14 is likely due to enter the testing phase. Unlike a full refurbishment, SpaceX may opt to keep most of its engines in place, replacing only a few if necessary. As a result, we can expect B-14 to undergo cryogenic testing with a complete engine configuration. Since the modifications to its engines are not expected to be significant, Booster 14 should move through the testing process relatively quickly. Once the cryogenic test is complete, it'll likely proceed to static fire testing without much delay. There is also a possibility that the cryogenic tests could be skipped entirely. If that happens, Booster 14 could be rolled out to the launch pad as early as next week for static fire testing. After completing this crucial step, it'll undergo the usual pre-launch checks and system validations bringing it one step closer to flight readiness. Compared to Booster 16, Booster 14's preparation timeline appears much more efficient, reinforcing the likelihood of an April launch. In fact, if the testing process proceeds smoothly, Flight 9 could take place even sooner than many expect. What's your prediction for the launch date if Booster 14 is used? However, before these preparations can move forward, the systems at the launch pad must be restored to full operational status. Following Flight 8 aside from minor issues like the vaporizer system malfunction and some debris scattering at the launch site, the key infrastructure such as the orbital launch mount, the launch tower, and the chopsticks appears to have sustained no major damage. With only minor repairs or component replaces needed, the launch pad should be ready to support the next Starship mission without significant delays. However, since the problem encountered in Flight 8 closely resembles the anomaly from Flight 7, the resolution process is expected to be relatively swift. Recently, an internal source revealed that SpaceX will not attempt to catch Super Heavy Booster 14 during Starship Flight 9 next month. Just a week ago, it was still unclear whether Starship Flight 9 would use Booster 14 or Booster 16. But now, there is a 90% chance that SpaceX will reuse Booster 14 to launch Starship version 2 on the upcoming flight. Booster 14 previously flew on Starship Flight 7, which launched on January 16, 2025.
During that mission, it completed its ascent, separated from Ship 33, and was successfully caught by the launch tower's chopstick arms at SpaceX's Starbase in Texas, marking it as the second booster ever to be caught, after Booster 12 on Flight 5. Following its catch, Booster 14 was moved to Mega Bay 1 for post-flight inspections and refurbishment. As for Booster 16, it currently lacks engines. So, when comparing the two, Booster 14 appears to be the clear choice. Given SpaceX's ambitions reusing Booster 14 for this flight, aligns with its goal of rapid reusability. Although no official details have been released about modifications made to Booster 14 since Starship Flight 7. The issues observed during its catch in that mission were relatively minor such as an engine failing to reignite during the boost back burn, later attributed to a low-power igniter. Despite this, it still successfully executed a landing burn and was caught. At this point, it would seem logical that Booster 14 could launch a new upper-stage starship, be caught by the launch tower's chopsticks again, and achieve another reusability milestone. However, SpaceX has decided not to attempt to catch this time. Instead, Booster 14 will perform a soft landing in the ocean. While choosing a water landing in the Gulf of Mexico might seem like a cautious approach or a technical limitation, the real reason appears to be more intentional. SpaceX wants to test a higher angle of attack during the booster's re-entry. This isn't about dodging a catch they can't pull off. They reportedly have the capability to snag it with the tower's chopsticks. Instead, it's a deliberate choice to push the envelope on re-entry dynamics, with a water landing offering the safest way to gather that data. The angle of attack refers to the orientation of the booster relative to the airflow. As it plunges back through Earth's atmosphere, choosing a water landing for this experiment makes sense when you consider the risks. A higher angle of attack could throw off the booster's trajectory or stability, making a tower catch trickier, or even dicey if something goes awry. Splashing down in the gulf gives SpaceX a controlled endpoint. No need to nail a pinpoint landing on the pad. Just a safe descent into the water where they can recover and analyze the booster afterward. It's a low-stakes way to run a high-stakes test, preserving the hardware for study. While avoiding potential damage to the launch tower. This approach reflects SpaceX's iterative philosophy. The proven durability of Booster 14 gives them the confidence to push boundaries and data from this flight could inform future booster adjustments or re-entry profiles. Far from being a setback, skipping the catch attempt for Flight 9 appears to be a calculated move to accelerate progress, striking a balance between bold experimentation and practical safety. When Booster 14 touches down on the water, it won't just be a landing. Every step SpaceX takes in this intense testing phase might seem slower than the pace we're used to from them but there's a reason behind it. Starship is a unique and unprecedentedly powerful rocket. With all these factors in place, the next Starship launch is rapidly approaching, marking another critical step towards SpaceX's vision of full reusability and deep space missions. Are you ready for the next era of spaceflight? And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button and if you want to support our channel and if you want to be up to date you can become an exclusive member so click on our perks through the link the description below thanks to watching and see you next time